got eyes on this, Reyes? Affirmative. Let's get in there! Hey there, I'm Ian from Eurogamer. Now, how about that Infinite Warfare reveal trailer? It didn't really do much for me at all. I think on a scale of 1 to excitement, I was sitting at around the minus 2 point. I kind of just sat there watching it with a glazed look in my eyes. That look though, that lasted right up until the point when Captain Price and his famous cigar appeared, signalling the start of a few beautiful seconds worth of Modern Warfare remastered gameplay. At that point I went all weak at the knees and started doing that throwing money at the screen thing. Holy crap, I thought. Forget Infinite Warfare, Modern Warfare Remastered is where it's at. Except, it turns out, I can't forget Infinite Warfare, and neither can you, because you can't get Modern Warfare Remastered unless you stump up for a special edition of Infinite Warfare. God damn it, Activision. Holy shit! Anyway, to take my mind off this whole disappointing episode, here's a list of six other times a special edition bonus was way cooler than the main game, but you had to buy the main game because it was the only way you could get the way cooler special edition bonus. How could they not have seen this? Number 1. Grid 2's Mono Edition Grid 2 is great at simulating the feeling of driving around in pimped out supercars, but you know what's better than a simulated feeling? An actual feeling, that's what. That's why the special edition for Grid 2's Mono Edition was miles better than the game, because it included an actual, real life, sit in it and drive it to the shops if you want supercar, the BAC Mono. According to the PR blurb at the time, the BAC Mono was an unrivaled example of lightweight performance engineering with a 2.3 litre, 280 brake horsepower, four cylinder power plant that would propel its driver from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 2.8 seconds. Which is technical speak for this car will make you shit your pants. Only one of these editions was actually made and it cost the buyer a cool £125,000. But who would be crazy enough to buy it? None other than comedy helmet head himself, DJ Deadmau5. The plonker. Number 2, Saints Row 4's Super Dangerous Wad Wad Edition, aka the Million Dollar Pack. Saints Row 4 was pretty good, but was it as good as a trip into space? I don't think it was. A trip into space wasn't the only bonus included in Saints Row 4's million dollar pack though. This ludicrously expensive special edition come shallow marketing ploy was full of luxurious goodies. So long as you stumped up the million dollars the edition was named after. Among the contents of the special edition was a voucher for extensive plastic surgery, a hostage rescue experience, there was a week for two at the glamorous Jefferson Hotel in Washington DC, and there was even not one, but two cars in there, a Lamborghini Gallardo and a new Toyota Prius. Unsurprisingly, the million dollar pack failed to attract a buyer, which is probably a good thing because, according to Ars Technica, who surfed a few price comparison websites, the actual cost of everything in the Super Dangerous Wad Wad Edition only came to around $629,000. What a ripoff! Number 3 Duke Nukem Forever Balls of Steel Edition. Duke Nukem Forever was terrible. A laughable attempt at rebooting a beloved franchise and a huge slap in the face for the legions of fans who pre-ordered the game expecting to receive something that was, at the very least, fun. But it wasn't fun, was it Gearbox? No, it wasn't. It was the opposite of fun. It was… unfun? Is that even a real word? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, it's kind of surprising then that such a terrible game would get such a cool special edition that's full to the brim with awesome bits of Duke swag. Along with a rather well-constructed bust of the man himself, the Balls of Steel edition contains a little paper craft Duke Nukem, a big old sticker, a pack of playing cards, some Nukem themed casino style dice and poker chips, a comic book, an art book and some comedy postcards that feature Mr. Nukem in a variety of hilarious situations. 
If you fancy grabbing Duke's Balls of Steel for yourself, you can find loads on eBay right now for less than 20 quid, so it's well worth picking one up if you like lovely gaming merch. Just do yourself a favour and leave the game sealed, or even better, toss it in the bin. Having it in the box just devalues the rest of it, to be honest. Number 4. Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Blacklist Paladin Multi-Mission Aircraft Edition Splinter Cell Blacklist reviewed really well, but sales-wise it underperformed, missing its predicted targets by miles. Maybe, as Jade Raymond thought, its complexity held back its popularity. Or maybe people just didn't like Sam Fisher's new voice. That's the signal. We're on. Personally, I think it would have sold much better if every copy came with a remote-controlled Paladin aircraft, just like the Tom Clancy Splinter Cell Blacklist Paladin Multi-Mission Aircraft Edition did. Oh, Jesus, why are these collector's edition names always so long? In the game, the C-147B Paladin served as a mobile HQ for Sam Fisher, a place where he could safely plan missions and argue with his daughter on the phone. In real life, the Paladin is a really beefy looking remote control plane that's powered by twin ducted fan jet engines. No, I don't know what that means either, but it sounds impressive. And it looks impressive too, look at it there, flying through the sky so fancy free. If I had to pick between a wonky voiced Sam Fisher and my very own freaking aeroplane, I know which one I'd choose. Oh yeah. Number 5. Borderlands The Handsome Collection Claptrap in a Box Edition while technically Borderlands The Handsome Collection is a great compilation, hardly anyone bought it because, well, everyone had already played the games already. Anyway, the Claptrap in a Box edition of The Handsome Collection is brilliant, and this little remote-controlled fella is way better than a couple of games you've already played. Not only does RC Claptrap actually balance on one wheel thanks to some nifty gyroscopic technology, he also has a built-in camera where his eye is so you can stream what he sees straight to your mobile phone. Oh, look at him go. And he does the catchphrases and everything. Scared? No! Oh, bless. Number 6. Resident Evil 6 Premium Edition Resident Evil 6 was so bad, the special edition bonus could have been an empty packet of crisps, and it still would have been better than the main game. Still, I've got to give a shout out to the premium edition of Resident Evil 6, which for the princely sum of £899 came with a real wearable replica of Leon Kennedy's leather jacket. Boasting a grand total of eight pockets, six outies and two innies, the replica jacket is made of high quality cowhide leather, so that means it will last you a hell of a lot longer than Resi 6's gameplay will. Not sure about that model's posture though, never trust a man who stands penis first, even if he does have a lovely leather jacket on. Let's get in there! So those were my picks for special editions with bonuses better than actual games. But did I miss any, or am I being wronger than a wrong person with my choices? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're doing that, why not have a click of one of these here videos? If you like list videos like this one, why not check out this video I did called Nine Reasons Doom's Campaign Gives Us Hope. It's out soon, and uh, I'm pretty excited for it after uh, seeing some uh, campaign gameplay. You can, you can watch snippets of that in this video here. Uh, what else have we got? We were talking about Modern Warfare Remastered. There's a video here that Johnny did comparing the remastered graphics from the reveal trailer to the graphics from the original game. That's pretty interesting if you want to check that out. And finally, uh, our very own editor Ollie Welsh reviewed Uncharted 4 recently, and he sat down with Aoife Wilson to talk all about the game and what they thought of it, because they've both played it. Uh, I haven't, by the way, so um, I'm kind of jealous and I also kind of hate them. Yeah. Alright, enjoy them, and I'll see you very soon. Goodbye!